that's me. Camouflaged amongst granite rocks, I have found something very special. A nest of one of the fastest declining bird species in the world. Might be a chick, might be an egg. We don't know. The notorious, yet critically endangered, long-billed vulture. A nest like this one is very important for this species' future. But is this nest a hope for these birds? To find the bird, Brutus and I travel a long distance to the southern tip of Thur Desert. Navigating the vast desert, I am heading towards some very unique pink granite mountains. The Karunjar Hills are one of the last strongholds of these endangered birds. These birds used to be a common sight in our skies, but now they are very hard to find as their population has dropped by 97% over the last few decades. Up until the 15th century, this vast and amazing landscape was beneath the Arabian Sea, except for the Karunjar Hills. Today, these hills provide nesting site to a very special and critically endangered bird. It is the long-billed, also known as Indian vulture. These vultures nest almost exclusively in colonies on cliffs. And those white droppings are a telltale sign that they are in residence. With signs as promising as these, it is time for me to blend in with my surroundings. So I nestle among the granite mountains too. What a life. It is definitely an active nest. Might be a chick, might be an egg. We don't know. If it is a chick, it's probably a very small one. When a parent lands here, we'll definitely find out what it actually is. If it's a chick, the parent is definitely bound to feed it. And they feed through regurgitating whatever they have brought from that desert out there. I just cannot wait to find out. In the meantime, the trick for me is to sit tight and wait. I do mean sit tight because I'm perched rather precariously here in the vulture territory. But my view is fantastic. I'll just admire vulture architecture while biding my time. The nest is in no way an elaborate structure. This structure will only be used once. And the chick, as it grows, it will push the stick one by one and it will completely destroy the structure. And right in the neighborhood, there is an example of that. But for these vultures, no matter how messy their home gets, it is still home sweet home. Not just one, but both parents appear in their characteristic hunched manner. Wow! Watching these vultures come in is truly a remarkable experience. Ah, oh, look at that!
It's as if a jet is landing or a swarm of one billion bees. And soon, others arrive at the colony. These vultures are stocky birds. Stocky birds need sturdy feet. Here is where vultures stash an enormous amount of food. Getting to that flesh can be messy, so you need the right head for it. Fumbles and fighting come naturally to vultures. These vultures are one of the most efficient flyers in the avian world. Once airborne, these birds utilize upward, hot currents of air, also known as thermals. They do this to effortlessly gain significant elevation at speed. All vultures are high flyers. One repels vulture was recorded flying at a height of 37,000 feet, the height at which commercial planes fly. We know this because it was sucked into the jet engines at the time. The neighbors have been showing off another soft side of their kind. Together, they collect suitable sticks from the surrounding area and then gently place each stick to build the nest. It is a part of the process of pair bonding, even the poking. Pair bonding is what keeps them close through the trials of courtship and raising their chick. It is a beautiful lifestyle. I have seen more than I hoped for in a single day in this unique landscape. But as time passes, I haven't seen any activity in the nest. I have been watching closely and I begin to worry. Where are the parents? I check my camera time and time again as my nerves begin to fray. And then, at last, the moment of truth. After waiting for five hours, I do get to see something very special. Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> the star has finally risen. It's a tiny, tiny chick there. And then one of the parents arrive again. This time with a crop full of food. It is getting ready to feed this chick. And I really need to get this on film. Ungainly with its heavy load, it enters the nest. 
This chick is hungry and stimulates the parent to regurgitate the food by pecking on its beak. And the gentle giant does exactly that. Because their talons cannot carry as much as their crop can, the parents gorge on the carcass and carry the best bits back to the nest. Vultures are amazingly caring parents. They put an incredible effort in rearing a single chick and they do it for six consecutive months. Wow, what a special bird and it's a special chick also. These birds are critically endangered. So a nest or a chick like this one is very important for this species future and for this species survival. Sadly, the population of vultures is in decline worldwide, particularly here in Asia. The reason is diclofenic sodium which is used to treat livestock. When vultures feed on a carcass that's been treated with diclofenic, they die because their kidneys are sensitive to the drug. A single carcass can kill up to 800 vultures, which is more than the combined population of white-rumped and long-billed vultures here in Pakistan. And when the parents die, chicks like this one starve to death. There are alternative drugs on the market. And although diclofenic has been banned in Pakistan since 2007, it is still available and people still use it widely. Will the Karunjar Hills remain a stronghold of these vultures? Only time will tell. It is really up to us. I hope the next time I'm here, I'll see them thriving in numbers, giving life to this desert.